Hey guys, it's Justin. Today we're going to be working on the Blue Mach 1. The oil filter adapter gasket is leaking. It's been leaking for a few years. You know, it's something that's common on these cars. And it seems like usually it does it more when it's cold. I think the gasket contracts more when it's cold after you drive it, you know. and So in the summer months it doesn't really seem to do it, but it does it in the winter. And uh, we're just getting out of the cold seasons here, but it's a good time to tackle this project. So we're going to do that today. Now this is the gasket that's recommended for the Mach 1 for the 4 valve. There's a part number right there. And you can tell it's blue. From what I understand, the orange one is for the Cobra if it's a Ford part. Felpro makes orange gaskets and other manufacturers, but for the Ford OEM parts, the blue gaskets for the Mach 1 and the orange ones for the Cobra. And now Late Model Restoration sells a Ford part and it says it's for all. 46 liters 96 to 04 or 96 to like 2009 so I think they may have revised it so it's one for all these rings here are the the, the differences usually one smaller for the two valve I believe but anyway this is the gasket we're going to be using okay so I'm just draining the coolant out of these lower hoses by the thermostat and then I'll get most of it out of there so it can work on it. Okay, so now that we've got the coolant drained, took off the oil filter, and we will be taking off those bolts. Right, we gotta go right there. See, there's where the oil filter was. There's three bolts above it and one below it. We'll take those out and that'll take the whole housing off and the gaskets behind that. Okay, so we got the housing off and you can see this looks like an aftermarket Felpro gasket and the shape should be the same. The shape and everything and the whole size. But it looks like they used some RTV, whoever did this uh, before and maybe that's causing it to leak. So I'm gonna scotch bright it and get it all smooth, put the new gasket in, scotch bright both sides. This car, I bought it with uh, 75,000 miles on it in 2011, and it's only at 85 now. I only put about 1,000 miles a year on it. So it's been a small little drip. You know, it's been here and there. It really hasn't been a big problem. I've been adding distilled water to it as I go, so most of the coolant that came out was just distilled water. Anyway, it was time for a coolant flush and time to change this gasket. So you can see I'm going around here with the brake cleaner and the Scotch-Brite pad. And you can see how I'm getting all of this off here. See how that's coming off? That's what it used to look like here. I'm going to get this all off nice and smooth. There's a tiny bit of pitting around this bolt here, but that's just the bolt. I don't know if that's going to cause a problem because the seal should be around here. But anyway, I might put a little dab of RTV around there to smooth it in. And uh, But anyway. It's looking good. We'll do the, the block side too. So there's the block side all cleaned up. Looks good. Here's the gasket. Fits on just like this. And this rib should be enough to keep anything away from that little bit of pitting, but I think I'll put a little dab of silicone in there just to smoothen it out a little bit. I use this um, ultra black Permatex because it's um, oil resistant and everything. So just a couple of threads with these bolts will hold the gasket in place in those little washer things. So I like to get them started like that and then get it up against the block even and make sure you don't cross thread any of them. Okay, so it's all bolted up in there. You should torque it to 22 to 25 foot pounds I believe. And uh, I drove the bolts all up equally because you want to do that so that one of them doesn't get tighter than the others or cross thread. Just make sure that they all go in straight and all about the same time and then snug them down. And there was also this oil pressure sensor switch right here, this plug that unplugs for the whole process too. I forgot to mention that. So I plug that back in. I'll uh, connect my radiator hoses back, put fresh coolant in, and it should be good to go with a new filter.
Okay, so we're gonna burp the cooling system. We're gonna fill it from where you're supposed to on the four valves. And I shot it with some of this uh, WD-40 rust released. Hopefully, hopefully get that to break loose pretty easy. They usually strip out. On the Red Mach one, I didn't fill it from there. And it's been okay, but I'm gonna try to do it the right way. This is a really good opportunity to clean out the inside of the expansion tank. So I'm going to go ahead and do that since I'll be putting all new coolant in and I want it to be nice and clean. So you can see I've made an investment of lots of distilled water. I'm going to be doing the cooling system on the Cobra too and the intercoolers. And I've got some antifreeze too for all this. So looking good. system uh, as much as I could and I'm just going to keep an eye on it and it runs good. I did run the heater by the way just to make sure that the heater had the coolant flowing through it, make sure we didn't have any air bubbles there. And I had to jack the car up Got the front up really high just to get any air bubbles out because I couldn't go from the crossover. Okay, so car ran great. I drove it down to town. About 30 minutes, drove it all around, did some highway pulls with it, made sure that I wasn't overheating. Kept an eye on the gauge, kept an eye on the coolant when I got downtown. Um, everything turned out well. I couldn't use the crossover on top. It was just, it actually, it actually broke my quarter drive ratchet. Just trying to get that thing off, even with the PB blaster. So I just decided to do what I did with the Red Mach 1, and I lifted the car up high, got the nose up real high, trying to get this to be the highest point here. And um, so I got it all up there, and um, I filled these hoses first, that one and this radiator hose that goes up to the crossover. So I filled those hoses all the way up, and then I added water from the expansion tank and, and coolant until with this hose off, coolant and water was coming out of it. So I knew there was, it was getting it up into the crossover. And the car was warmed up too, so the uh, thermostat down there was letting coolant through the other lines. So I had it topped off and I let it burp and I, you know, I squeezed the, the lines and I revved the engine with the cap off and that would bubble out some. And, you know, I did everything I could to get past that crossover and Seems like it's fine. I'm going to check the coolant level once it cools down, and if it's low, I'll definitely add some, and that's all I really need to keep an eye on. As for the oil, because um, this is a um, oil filter adapter housing, coolant and oil both pass through it, so I made sure to uh, add a little extra oil because the filter came off and you lose everything that was in the filter and a little